In a recent video on this channel, I spoke about all the negative comments I've ever received about Tucson, Arizona from viewers. And in that particular video, I didn't really agree with most of my viewers' comments, but I wanted to have their voices heard because everybody should have the right to speak up about things they don't like in a city, even if I don't necessarily agree with what they're saying. But it got me thinking. I'm a born and raised Tucsonan. I've lived here almost 40 years. And even though I love this city, I know it's not perfect. Hey everyone, it's Kimberly, your go-to real estate agent in Tucson, Arizona. And today I'm telling you all the things that I don't like about Tucson, Arizona. Keep in mind, it's not a very long list because overall, I really do love this place. And you can watch all the other videos on this channel to learn more about all my favorite things to do and see in the city and surrounding areas. But I will admit that I have some pet peeves about Tucson, and if I have them, I'm sure other people have them too. If you're a local Tucsonan, I'd really like to know if you agree with my list. So let the world know in the comments below if you feel the same way or if you have a few pet peeves of your own that I forgot to mention. If you learned anything today, you can thank me by punching the thumbs up button and destroying the red subscribe button so we can hang out in future Tucson videos. And don't forget to contact me if you decide to buy or sell a home in Tucson or the surrounding areas. All my contact information is in the description below each video on this YouTube channel. So what are some of my least favorite things about my hometown of Tucson, Arizona? Number six, the construction that goes on forever. I don't know if other Tucsonans notice this, but since I'm out driving every single day, sometimes for hours and hours as a real estate agent, I constantly pass roads that are under construction and I don't know what it is, but I feel like our construction just takes forever. It makes me happy that Tucson is updating their city and anytime they do any kind of city improvements, that obviously can't be a bad thing, but there have been roads that have been under construction for like six months and I'm not really sure why. Obviously some jobs take longer than others and there are some pretty major projects that need to happen, but sometimes I wonder why they're taking as long as they are. Again, I really shouldn't be complaining because construction means improvements, which means progress, which means eventually new clean roads and buildings. I just wish it didn't go on forever and ever. Number five, some of my favorite parts of the city are also traditionally some of the higher crime areas. Some of my favorite places in Tucson are the University of Arizona and downtown Tucson. These places are cool and hip and the university is absolutely beautiful and really well kept. And I love walking around both areas. Both the U of A and downtown have amazing restaurants and just really cool scenes to attract people of all ages, including families. Downtown Tucson has the Tucson Children's Museum, which is really cool for families. And the university has multiple museums and the planetarium is really cool. And they've got places to see shows and plays and all kinds of events take place downtown and at the university. But unfortunately, the areas near the university in downtown are traditionally higher crime. And this is probably not uncommon in other cities as well. So it's probably not just unique to Tucson. But as a real estate agent, I get buyers moving here who are young and active and looking for a lot of cool things to see and do. And they want to be living in a place that's close to all the action. And they'll be like, what's the safest area to live in downtown? And I'm like, and by the way, I really don't give advice to buyers about which areas they should live in or not. I don't steer people in one direction or another. I like to be the source of the source, giving buyers the information they need to decide on their own what they want and like. I always recommend that all buyers do their own research on crime statistics so that it's not just left up to me because I would never want a buyer to feel like I didn't tell them about a certain area just because it's not safe. But I really wish that those areas near the university and downtown were traditionally lower crime because those are such cool parts of town and there's so much to see and do in those areas. And even though I love hanging out there during the day, I usually just wouldn't be around those areas after dark, to be quite honest with you. I have an entire video just about Tucson crime and Tucson crime rates. And a lot of our crime here is just petty theft, like car break-ins. <laughs> And we don't have a ton of random violent crime, but it's still important for you to be educated about our crime and where it is most likely to happen in the city. Obviously anything can happen anywhere, but it's kind of one of my pet peeves about Tucson that some of the coolest parts of the city are also unfortunately some of the traditionally higher crime areas. Speaking of crime, 
People make comments on my channel that I should talk more about Sentinel Peak, also known as A Mountain, which is a major landmark in our city. I would talk about it more if it wasn't such a high crime area. Number four, there is a lot of trash in certain areas of Tucson. I've talked about this in other videos, and honestly, Tucson is a pretty big spread out place, so it's really just in certain areas, but it is pretty bizarre how I do so much driving and I pass so many roads and washes and parks and alleys, and they are just full of trash. And I'm like, who's in charge of cleaning up these roads? Believe it or not, I'm actually one of the types of people who puts my money where my mouth is on this one, and I have been known to go out and clean up trash on my own if I'm not happy with some of the trash I see. And quite frankly, I feel like anyone who's not happy with the trash should go out and try to take care of the problem themselves instead of complaining about it. But if there are people who are assigned from the city to clean up those certain areas, either they aren't getting out there as often as they should be, or maybe the people who live in those areas just don't care so they haven't called the city to take care of the problem or whatever the case may be. The bottom line is that certain areas of Tucson are absolutely gorgeous. The roads are clean and nice and new looking and beautiful and all the plant life on the sides of the roads are well kept. And then there are other areas of the city where there's trash and the roads are bad and the trees and the bushes are dead or overgrown. And obviously those areas need a little bit more attention, either by someone who gets paid to maintain them or by volunteers in the area who could go out and do it as a group project. Number three. We share our city with scorpions, pack rats, and rattlesnakes. Some places have bears, some places have gators. But here in Tucson, we have scorpions, rats, and rattlers. I'm lucky that I've never been stung by a scorpion, but I know plenty of people who have, and it's apparently not very pleasant. I definitely have plenty of experience with pack rats, which are those little rats that like to live in garages and porches and anywhere where you might have anything with wiring, like campers or treadmills or any type of machines. They also make nests with cactus and just poop all over the place and it's just really messy and gross. Fortunately, I've never encountered a coiled rattlesnake, but when I'm out walking or jogging or hiking, that is the very first thing on my mind. My eyes are always open for them, I'm always aware and listening for them, and I'm always looking down at the road in front of me. I'll have other videos on this channel about all three of these animals and different ways you can avoid them or try to live in harmony with them here in Tucson. So make sure you're subscribing for more information about them. But even though these animals are just part of Tucson and of course they were here long before humans were, I still get a little nervous around them. But if you want to live in Tucson, it's just part of the scene here. You just kind of have to learn to live with it. By the way, I do want to add that we have a lot of other snakes here that are not rattlesnakes and they are beautiful and they actually keep the rodent population low and even some of our snakes eat rattlesnakes. So if you see a snake in the wild, just let it be, let it live, admire it from a distance, don't mess with it, leave it alone and it should leave you alone. Number two, homeless and poverty problems have become more obvious recently. This is a very delicate subject, and unfortunately, this is not just unique to the Southwest or to the Southern part of Arizona. But unfortunately, in the past year or two, homelessness and poverty in Tucson has become more prevalent and unfortunately, a little more obvious in our city. It is not uncommon to see people standing on street corners with signs asking for food or money, people walking down the street with shopping carts and backpacks that they clearly take with them everywhere, people sleeping on benches at parks or even living outside of grocery stores or setting up tents underneath bridges, especially near the freeway. I see it more in certain areas than others. I see it more in Midtown and Downtown than I see in the suburbs and outside parts of the city, possibly because those areas have better access to public transportation, so it's easier to get around Midtown and Downtown. And even though this is not a problem unique to Tucson, it's definitely something that needs to be addressed in our community, especially recently. Number one, our real estate has gotten much more expensive recently. As a real estate agent, I really shouldn't have this on my list of complaints, and I suppose this is one of those things that could be a pro or a con, depending on how you look at it. It's great for current homeowners, for example. And of course, every other city in the nation is seeing the same thing. 
but as a real estate agent, I work with buyers from multiple places, and these days, the average Tucsonan cannot afford the average Tucson home. Tucson isn't known for having a lot of high paying jobs, but we are a popular place to move to and buy real estate in due to our sunshine, low humidity, and multiple outdoor activities. So recently, a lot of people can work remotely and they're leaving their expensive cities and moving to Tucson to enjoy our laid back lifestyle here, but they can keep their high paying jobs from back wherever they're from so they can afford more expensive housing. And no, by the way, people aren't just moving here from California. They're moving here from everywhere, and I mean that. So the average person moving here from Seattle or Portland or Colorado, or yes, California, can drop half a million dollars cash on a home here like it's nothing. But the average Tucson local making 30 grand a year can't even come close to competing. I come out with real estate market update videos from time to time on this channel, so make sure you're subscribing to follow along with all of that. I hope this list has helped you learn a little bit more about Tucson, and I hope it hasn't turned anyone off too much about this beautiful city. I actually drive all day, working with buyers and sellers, exploring all parts of the city, and even though I love traveling, there's nowhere I'd rather live than Tucson, Arizona. But I have to be honest, we're not perfect. No place is. The question is whether or not Tucson is perfect for you. To buy or sell real estate in Tucson, contact me and let's get started. All my contact information is in the description below each video on this channel and explore the rest of the channel for other things to do and see in the city and surrounding areas. Don't forget to comment below with your favorite or least favorite thing about this city. And remember to hit the like and subscribe and all the other buttons on your way out the door. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in the next Tucson video.